quack, quack, quack. Whoops. Welcome. I forgot that you do not speak duck, but the story I'm about to tell you is so important that during the time that you are hearing it, you will understand duck. Consider it my gift to you. By the way, did you know that ducks can understand English? Uh, yep, but that's another story for another day. My name is Melvin Mallard. A mallard is a type of duck, one of several that you will meet today. I have a duck story to beat all other duck stories. It is about a good friend of mine by the name of Barry. Barry was a bufflehead, another type of duck, and, well, let's start at the beginning. The time when my friend Barry was born, you see, Mr. and Mrs. Buffelhead were nervous. They were waiting for their egg to hatch. They waited and waited. They were nervous. When do you think it will hatch, Mr. Buffelhead asked. Mrs. Buffelhead just shrugged her wings and said, Don't know. It'll probably hatch when we least expect it. Then they heard the sound they were expecting. Crack! The two looked down. The egg had a crack in it. The way I heard the story, Mr. Buffelhead caught Mrs. Buffelhead's wing as she was reaching down to help open the crack so the duckling could escape the egg. Don't help, he said, as he gently brought her wing back up. Let nature take its course. Well, now Mrs. Buffelhead looked on while the crack got bigger and bigger, and then as nature would have it, the egg broke and two feet shot out of the egg. Feet with claws. Where are the webbed feet, Mr. Buffelhead asked, sounding worried. Maybe he'll grow them. You'll see, Mrs. Buffelhead answered, although deep down inside she was also worried. Every duck knows that without webbed feet, landing on water would be a problem, and paddling in the water would not even be possible. Mr. and Mrs. Buffelhead waited while Barry, which was the name they gave their new duckling, grew his webbed feet. Time passed. Still no webbed feet for Barry. Mr. Buffelhead saw that Barry was happy and carefree, but knew that his not having webbed feet would be a problem as Barry grew up. He tried to teach him how to swim, but Barry's claws made him unable to move in the water at all. Barry would make a swirling motion, much like you do when you splash in a bathtub. Mr. Bufflehead decided to take action. He went down to the Bufflehead sports shop and bought a pair of fins. You know, the ones, the type they use to help you paddle your feet while you are underwater. Well, anyway, Mr. Bufflehead made Barry wear them, even coloring the fins to match the color of webbed feet. But after a while, the color wore off, and Barry knew that sooner or later, people would find out he was wearing fake feet. Besides, Barry hated wearing the fins. They were uncomfortable, hard to walk in, and weighed him down while he was flying. Plus, they hurt the back of his feet. But his father and mother insisted, saying that he would only have to wear them until he grew out of this phase, whatever that meant. So Barry suffered while wearing his flippers. Other ducklings made fun of his funny walk. The only time Barry felt really happy was when his father would tell him stories about buffalo heads and other types of ducks. Every night before Barry went to sleep, his father would explain how the buffalo head got their name. Barry told me that he never got tired of those stories. You see, Mr. Bufflehead explained, the buffalo heads are a proud bunch. Their name came from buffalo and head. There's a story that a buffalo longing to be able to fly and swim like a duck wished and wished to be a duck. One day the buffalo woke up in the water quacking to his delight. Barry listened with a smile on his face. If a buffalo can wish to be a duck, then it would be simple to wish for web feet. Barry also listened while his father told him stories about other ducks. One story that Barry remembered was how the pintail duck was made. Barry's father told Barry the pintails were actually bees that wished they would swim in the water. They too woke up one day with their stingers replaced with tail feathers. The new ducks had fun swimming all over the local lake. The fins and the fables took Barry's mind off the first day of duck school. Finally, Barry started school and was well liked by everyone. Well, almost everyone. You see, I didn't like Barry. Not one bit. In fact, you might say that we were enemies. Barry flew better than me, like Penny Pintail, who happened to be my girlfriend, although I always had this feeling that she liked him more than she liked me. 
what I found out was that Barry would go off on his own and practice flying. Barry would go over to the pond area, take off his ugly fins, and practice flying along the water. He would dive down and grab bright twigs and branches, making sure he never touched the water, sometimes dropping them back in the water, making a huge splash. The practice would last for hours, and he enjoyed it immensely. He liked hearing the splash and the twigs and branches he threw back in the water. He learned to aim and hit certain spots in the water. He was always more successful without those stupid fins. He would look at them, replace them at the edge of the water, making sure they were in the spot where no one could see them. He never noticed that I was in the bushes watching him. He never thought that anyone would want to ruin his good time. I remember one day at school was filled with excitement. The flock was moving east to go to better, better weather, but the adults knew it would be dangerous because there were humans in the area, some sitting on the water carrying sticks that made loud noises and hurt ducks. Ducks expected these humans at certain times of the year, but there were humans that hurt ducks at other times throughout the year. Once, a duck heard them called poachers. That is what we call them. All the ducks were excited because the older ducks were selecting the lead duck. The lead duck would be somewhat special because they would lead all the ducks as they moved east. However, the lead duck had to be brave because they would probably be the first to be hurt since they would be at the front of the flock. Even so, everyone competed hard for the lead spot. Each contender had to fly a course, take off, and land in formation, as well as quack directions clearly to the flock. Barry was nervous, but confident. Malvin Mallard! The elder voice quacked. I heard my name and went to the starting line and took off like a pro, if I do say so myself. Barry stood there knowing he did not have a chance, but tried to keep his confidence up. He decided to go somewhere and think for a moment, but heard a voice behind him. Barry, where are you going? Barry turned toward the voice. It was Penny Pintail. Don't go, you're next, Penny yelled. Barry could see in her eyes that she had faith in him. Why didn't he have faith in himself? That's when he felt something hit him from behind. It knocked him on his face. As he got up, he could see a crowd of ducks gathering. That's when he realized both of them, most of them were looking behind him. Barry turned and saw me standing behind him. In my beak were Barry's fins.